give him plasma so I can have enough uh, money so I can go up and down the river. That's what I do. Merry Christmas again. It's starting to get dark. But this is an important video because this will show you the difference between an area that is not hooked to the Kalamazoo River and an area that you've already seen is contaminated. See how clear that is? It's not brown. This is what water is supposed to look like when it's frozen. It's not supposed to be dirty, dark brown because the oil has contaminated it so bad. Merry Christmas everybody, it's uh, December 25th, 2013, uh, sorry I'm shaking, it's kind of cold out here, but this is what I'm doing for Christmas. I'm in Galesburg, Michigan, and uh, we had the 2010 oil spill by Enbridge, um, well over a million gallons, they didn't clean it up properly and it flooded, went into the swamps. We're nearly 40 miles away from the, where the spill was. And look how bad it is. And this is four years later. I mean, it's all through here. And they're saying you can eat the fish. They're saying you can swim in this. This is, the river's right here. It's right on the other side of these trees. This is all an attachment to Morrow Lake. Disgust me. Please help me help us. What I mean by that is gas money, SD cards. Um, I need to do interviews, speeches. I need your help. If I don't get financial support for this, I can't keep doing this. This is what I'm doing for my Christmas, everybody. I didn't even buy my girlfriend a present for Christmas because I can't afford one. But this is what I do. And I'm proud to do it. Just help me out. Help me help you. All through here. Just completely dark. Just so, it's so contaminated. People don't realize how bad it is. Kalamazoo River. Galesburg, Michigan. The mile marker. This shows how far away it is. It's 35. Excuse me, 36.5. Look how dark that is. Dam. He's showing you how contaminated this water is. Look how dark it is. Merry Christmas 2013, Stresco Dam. Used to be that this was all water right through here, but now it's land. What they did is they just put dirt over the oil that was in here instead of dredging it. And they made it real thin. It's about one third the size of what it used to be, the Kalamazoo River, um, here at Suresco Dam. And as you see, I'll show you all the dirt. These white bags are full of dirt. And what they do is they just put it over the top after they drain out the water, and they put it over the oil. Perfect way for them to save tens of millions of dollars, maybe even a hundred million dollars they might save in this area just because of what they did. Because now they don't have to dredge any of this water. They just put dirt over it. 
Well, it's New Year's Eve, everybody. This is uh, John Ballball. This is what I do on a daily basis with Helper.org. Um, just showing you how close they put these pipelines next to these houses. After finding out with a company that has a shoddy safety record, a poor maintenance record, um, they're going to increase the pressure, increase the volume of oil, it's going to be closer to our house, we're hugely concerned. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. Anybody, I mean, you've, you've come out here and seen a couple of the progressive things that have happened, and this is just insane. This is the pure definition of insanity. Doing the same process over and over again, thinking that you're going to have a different result, and it's not. It's the same. It's another landowner being walked on, saying that we need these pipelines. Well, guess what? I need my house, too, or the value of my house. I need safety for my family. You know, the, this company cannot assure me either of those things. Well, here in a second, you're going to feel a vibration, um, and you feel this nonstop. I feel this uh, from almost 7 in the morning till 7 at night, depending on the weather or the, the day of the work schedule. But this has been going on for almost six months now. And we haven't even excavated and had pipe installed on our property. But six months of this con construction is what somebody can look forward to behind their home. Well, um, just off the top of my head, just the oil company is not very forthcoming. Um, they give you bits of information, but to seek out the truth, as a landowner, you kind of have to do it on your own. They're not sitting there and telling you the whole process. This was not explained to us. This was never explained to us. Do you think that we would have agreed to this? Um, the matting that was installed. I mean, they know what goes on when it comes to these pipeline construction. But we as a landowner don't know this. Look at how evasive this is. This is right on top of our home. Our home is shaking because of this. Fight as hard as you can, first of all, and don't give up. Um, have your neighbors band together. And it doesn't even matter if your neighbor's affected by the pipeline. If this thing leaks, your neighbor's going to be affected by it. This is a foreign oil company um, doing this on American soil behind my house. And I don't have a say in it. And you're seeing a couple minutes of this on video, but this has been six months of this. And it's hard to explain to people how this affects you every day. I don't know what more to say. They're just, I mean, this is just, this is so crazy. You have no control over what's going on in your life and your, your land and everything is just being devastated behind you and you see your, your everything diminished that you're working for. And I know that there's people that have it much worse than us. I know that. But this is just, this is not right. Everybody who comes here says that this is not right. You don't have to be a professional. It's an easy way to see right and wrong. And this is not right. Why are you getting choked up, Dave? Because this is my house. And you know, I've dealt with this for way too long. I battled with this every day. And I'm, I'm one man against a, goal, a giant company. I've never changed. I don't believe in chaining myself to a piece of equipment because it doesn't accomplish anything. If you want attention, do it the right way and get some evidence that is going to be used in the court of law or that people can understand and believe. What do you believe about the people that are are chaining themselves to, to pieces of equipment and, and in the attempt to stop this pipeline? What do you think about that? Uh, they're going about it the wrong way. I can prove that I've cost this company a lot of money just by calling them out on their bad construction practices, not doing what they said they were going to do, and the matter that they were going to do it, which has caused them to stop working on their project, uh, regrouping, doing it the right way the second or third time. And the people that are chaining themselves up are only getting themselves arrested in something on their criminal record. Well, when people actually chain themselves to a piece of equipment, these workers aren't upset. They just go to another area and work. So there's, there's not any loss of income. They're not stopping the pipeline at all because it's still going to go through. It's just for attention. That's all they're doing. So what do you think about the people that, that do chain themselves? I mean, you're right. They're just getting arrested. But what, what positive do you see about what they've done? 
I find it hard that there's a lot of positivity in it. I really, I, I can't, I don't support that type of action. It's more of a militant type action. It's a, it's an easy way out. I could go out right now and stand in front of that bulldozer and refuse to move. And that's, that's stupid. My house is worth a third of what we owe. I mean, the whole town's real estate values just fall right through the floor, not just immediate proximity. I think. So. I think the two are related there, too. Oh, definitely. January 6, 2014, I'm in Comstock, which is over 40 miles away from where the spill happened. Look how toxic this water is. Look at this. All of it. This is what they're saying your kids can swim in. This is not clean. This is not safe for your children. Enbridge and the EPA and the DEQ and the DNR are lying to you. We just found out that I'm pregnant. And did we have any presents under the tree? We had no presents under the tree. We did not give each other presents. We didn't go on any trips. Um, pretty much our present was getting a place to live that wasn't the camper. And what did I do on Christmas? John went out to the river on Christmas to get some footage. And I worked. I worked Christmas Eve and Christmas Day so we could save up some extra money. So everybody thinks I'm getting all these donations and I'm getting all this money to finance what I'm doing. Um, is that true? No. Michigan Coalition Against Tar Sand. They are not giving John any credit when he does all the work and they're, they seem to be getting all the donations for just doing their little protests here and there. And A lot of them are trying to copycat John. Um, a lot of them are trying to get their five minutes here and there on the news. It's just stupid because John's the one who's been doing all the work for three years now, which I don't know why. Because why wouldn't you want a whistleblower to go up and t talk about what's going on in Michigan? And I believe the reason is because they don't want him to get any more credit than he's already gotten. Because they know darn well that once people find out about what he's done, he's going to be more popular than them. And that's a threat to their um, income, all the donations they get, the people who support them. It's just a threat to it, I guess. So they want to try and shut him up. We have just enough to pay our bills. But we have that nice tree over there. The tree? Yeah. Well, I mean, we bought we bought the Christmas stuff last year for the tree. Right. And we paid, uh, what, 65 bucks for the tree and stuff and have it delivered. So, I mean, but everybody's going to say that's a beautiful tree. That's the only thing we had for this Christmas. We didn't have any presents. I've been to the Gulf. I've seen the BP oil spill. I've seen real tar balls. Those are rocks. They might have some oil on it because they were sitting in an oil-filled river at the, and they're at the bottom of the river. Uh, or they might have chemicals that have soaked into them. Um, but that's old news. He was just trying to get his 15 minutes of fame. And now he's trying to copy, co copycat your documentary, too, calling it Tarsi and Truth. And how dare you do that when you've done all the work? You lost your career making four grand a week. And your health. And he's going to sit there and copycat you? That's bullshit. 